हेलो एवरीबॉडी एंड वेलकम टू क्योंकि प्रॉफ्स भी कभी स्टूडेंट्स थे अ पॉडकास्ट वेर वी इंटरव्यू प्रोफेसर्स अबाउट देयर कॉलेज लाइफ टुडे विथ अस वी हैव प्रोफेसर अनुराधा नरसिम्हम फ्रॉम द देसाई सिटी स्कूल ऑफ ऑन्टरप्रनरशिप अनु मैम कैन वी स्टार्ट विद अ स्मॉल इंट्रोडक्शन हाई दिस इज एन इंट्रोडक्शन नॉट जस्ट फॉर यू दिस इज एक्जैक्टली हाउ आई सेट टू हुएवर आई मीट बेस्ट थिंग इन माई लाइफ वॉज टू कम टू आई आई टी ग्रेजुएटेड फ्रॉम योर इन नाइनटीन नाइनटी then i went to i am bangalore graduated in 92 and over a 24 year career i have learned how to sell how to do marketing how to do strategy so worked with companies like titan unilever and britannia and the best thing i did to myself was come back here uh, to teach at iit bombay very lucky that iit called me back to teach uh, ma'am you mentioned that you uh, left industry and joined here what uh, inspired that decision Oh, uh, I just think um, um, I, I, I mean, there are a few things that I learned as I was working. I missed um, uh, the entrepreneurship pass because uh, we were children of the liberalization. Graduated in '92, I think Manmohan Singh was the chief guest at the IMB convocation that year, so was never short of jobs. People chased us for jobs, and that meant you didn't do your own thing. I will do mine when I'm 60, I think. The other thing I realized as I was working was uh, uh, just teaching, uh, including people in my team, was something I found very satisfying. Um, so uh, I was the chief marketing officer at Britannia. Uh, the next job <laughs> would have been CEO. I guess I ran away from the CEO job. Uh, I started studying for a PhD. I wanted to learn new things, so I quit my job. Uh, started a PhD at the age of forty-eight, I think. Finished my PhD, and I joined IIT at roughly the same time. I was also volunteering a lot uh, at IIT as an alum, so raised money, um, came and did projects here. Some in clean energy, some in entrepreneurship, some in uh, the gender cell. I tried doing branding at IIT and realized it's it's too large a thing to take up and so on. So yeah, it was very fascinating to be back. Really nice to be back, and like I said, best thing I did to myself, talking to twenty-year-olds, <laughs> contributing to their ideas. Can't think of anything better to do. Okay, so it's probably been a while since you were a student and now you're a professor. So, what was hostel life uh, like when you were a student compared to? what you hear you know about it now sure. so uh, there was only uh, hostel 10 there was also hostel 11 but all the undergrads were in hostel 10 so our world revolved around h10 um h10 was i'm going to say um uh ground floor first floor and one fourth of the second floor so i don't think we had more than 120 rooms in my batch we had 310 students total which is all departments put together and know the numbers almost 1400 in an undergrad batch now we were 311 and there were a grand total of nine girls in my batch <laughs> so when i i hear and i see that you know there are 240 250 uh, your hostel life is definitely distinctly different from ours we were a small group but we were a very close knit group i'm sure close knit groups still happen today We were a close knit group. Um, um, I was a bit of a um, country mouse. I came from what was then small town Ahmedabad to big bad Bombay, and the two girls who welcomed me to the campus were so smart looking. And I said, you know, when I grow up, I will be smart, forgetting that I had already grown up and I was seventeen and a half or eighteen or whatever. Uh, but I was in big bad Bombay. Uh, we used to. Um, Our mess was our uh, focal point. So as you walked in, there was this guest lounge. We used to have guys in the guest lounge all the time. We used to have guys in the mess all the time. It was it, that was how life was. Uh, we had this rule which said um, uh, any member of the opposite gender had to be escorted in and out at all times. And I think that was the best thing. We didn't want to run into random um, yeah, guys yeah. Uh, in our corridor. We had a rule that. Um, they would not be seen between people of the opposite gender would not be seen in the hostel areas between 11:30 and 6:30 
if I remember right, that was exactly how the rule was written. Don't ask me to interpret <laughs> the rule, but interpret it whichever way you want to. I think the biggest difference I see today is we didn't have any technology. Right? Mm -hmm. So our only technology was uh, a television. Right? Television, uh, shared television uh, in our hostel lounge. I don't even remember if we watched too much of it. There was a nice music room, uh, uh, which was, I think, more a place that people hung out in. But our mess, crosswords, just chatting were the things we did. I think today's people uh, spend far too much time with themselves and their phones uh, and not with other human beings. Uh, is uh, So I can show you our pictures. We used to hang out at the, literally at the gate outside knowing that we'll run into people. So you're meeting people. I said I came from a small town and I really believed I had very little talent. Uh, I didn't sing, I didn't dance, I didn't play a sport, but at IIT, I did everything. <laughs> so at IIT, when you have as few girls as we had, we all had to play basketball, otherwise we wouldn't form a team. <laughs> so, you know, I'm all of five feet one inch, but uh, played basketball, went for inter IIT Chennai. And, uh, no, inter IIT Chennai is what I remember. And uh, we all did uh, Modai. Uh, I was not GS cult, but I was the cult nominee in my final year. So my, um, I was a hostel mess secretary, hostel general secretary, and in my final year, I was the institute cult norm, which actually in today's day you call um, Mudai OC. So I was Mudai OC in my final year. Besides your hostel, you know, music room, etc. What was your favorite spot to hang out on campus as a student? And uh, what is it now? So, uh, so I think, um, I was thinking, you asked me this question, so I thought of it. I, I think the area around the gymkhana, mm -hmm. and I, I mean, whether it was the basketball court and it still looks exactly the same, the bleachers look exactly the same. We used to have a, um, um, I can't call it a restaurant, and give it a uh, place, a space to eat. We used to call it the Chinese corner. Uh, I think it has undergone many names. It used to be at H8, just outside H8, opposite the gym khana. That was the only place that used to be open till 3 in the morning. I remember uh, rainy nights where we'd be holding up the tarpaulin but continuing to eat chow mein. So, um, favorite place was around there. Uh, we spent a lot of time outside our own hostels and in common spaces. I don't know if that happens as much. So, I don't want to say that it doesn't happen. But we were just hanging around. I learned ham radio. I went mountaineering um, regularly, not just mountaineering once or so on. But like I said, played basketball. Um, I um, used to set quizzes and what's the good word and things like that. Because there were so few of us and we, we had to do kind of everything. So I'm like, yeah. So that's our life. But the favorite hangout place was um, H8 uh, Chinese Corner uh, around the Chimkhana. Now is a very good question. Um, I think from um, memories, the arch is uh, and the corridor mm -hmm. are what uh, is very quintessentially uh, IIT. Yeah. Uh, we used to have where currently you guys have chayos. We used to have a Maggie stall there. I think Maggie got launched around the time that we were third year or final year. There was a Maggie Nescafe Maggie stall. Another favorite place. So uh, somewhere where Chayos is uh, is my favorite. Although I miss my Maggie or whatever. If I told you we had a telephone exchange right next to the Chayos stall, mm -hmm. and to uh, call home, you had to do a trunk call. Most of you will not even understand what these things mean. Mm -hmm. There was this very uh, gadgetry looking thing. You had a long line. We used to make friends with people who were standing in line. They would book a call. There was this, like, you can see my hand, it's turning around like one rotary. Mm -hmm. uh, that's how the phones were. So, um, getting a library book at 10 p.m. was not my scene. I was not a nerd who did library as much. But around the sack, around the gymkhana, around the Chinese corner. And right now, I think uh, maybe somewhere around the Chayos, Gulmohar. Uh, uh, I wish there was a oh IDC canteen so for me hanging out places are like that now uh, don't run into students as much I wish I did
you also mentioned that you know students spend a lot of time with themselves and it may or may not be because of you know the technological revolution and so much of our um, even discussions with professors they happen on moodle and grades are all online there are some exams which are online so what do you think uh, s- the students miss when the technological age has come along i guess so we used to use this word called cack session uh, spelled c a c k and you might learn some old lingo from <laughs> us so cack sessions were just uh, too much at huh? uh, they go from i don't know wherever to wherever i can't even remember huh? so i think those were what and um, um, i don't think uh, at least let me talk for myself i'm not talking about the group but um, i really used to enjoy just meeting people so i use this word i don't know if it's derogatory or not but derogatory or not but putting people so meeting people and making friends was my thing and that's what i uh, i think um, that uh, and i do it myself so i'm in touch with old friends on whatsapp or facebook or seeing influencers on insta and saying oh i wish i looked like that mm-hmm. or so on i think that time could be better spent is what i think in my world i have given up reading i only meaning books have gone the 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 fiction kind of books have gone i still read non fiction but i miss that and i wonder if um, no i don't think it is to do with academic pressure uh, is is it i'm i'm i think all of you come from academic pressure of a very pressure cooker like situation when you are in your 10th 11th 12th uh, maybe even earlier i don't know so i don't know whether and maybe you know now that i'm on the other side i don't think profs are giving you too much trouble is what i'm going to say but i think you have experienced higher pressure so i don't know maybe i'm wrong we all come here and and i'll tell you my story i came here i was of course all of us who come here have been first rank in our schools or first three ranks in our school or first whatever ranks in our school we had a physics prof who would run a quiz very early in the semester out of 25 marks on dipan ghosh's quiz physics 101 or whatever it was called i think i got 6 and 6 was the median 6 was the median or the mode or whatever and said this is it this is how life is going to be of course i had a friend who got 18 and i looked at her and said wow but i was happy with my six so i was i i write about this as about life maximization didn't want to just be a academic and so on so life maximization that uh, life lesson you can learn from me anytime okay speaking of some instilling or before we do our quiz why don't you tell us some, some of one. your in- insti yeah. lingo so i actually made a mug which had all the old lingo of our time so cack is i already told you we had a word called d not d hyphen not which meant danda not huh? which i think the hindi word we use is lukha or whatever there was another word which was nbd so people were nabdu or they were having nervous breakdowns but our nervous breakdowns were uh, just a uh, thing you know i mean you could get a number over anything valentines day is coming should i send a uh, eclair or shall i send a dairy milk chocolate is enough to get number so i'm just telling you the scale of number or nabdu was like but of course there were some who were more academically uh, nabdu and so on mm, i think those are the ones i uh, mm, like the most or i at least remember the most uh, i've learned a couple now but let me try the ones you will give me Okay so i have four new okay. words for you okay. uh i think the first one you might know let's start off easy okay. rg oh rg is the same <laughs> rg is the same didn't believe too much on it relative grading is the expansion but rg is rg i don't think rg has an expansion <laughs> and rg doesn't have to be academics rg can be can i get to eat food before you and get the better helping can be also rg so rg is just you know getting ahead or whatever huh? that's right uh second one bt oh mm, bt now nope, i've got i was hoping you'll ask me a easy one but bt no nope. tell me what it is uh, um, i'll give you a hint yeah. uh if i have to use it in a sentence uh a person asks me oh what happened to your project you were doing under some professor don't ask bt ho gayi yaar 
So I, I can understand the context, but I'm not able to. And the other thing that's happened, sorry, uh, have have lingos become multi-language now? Because a lot of our lingo was still very English. Huh? Maybe your English, sorry, not getting. BT is BT is a is it's an acronym for bad trip. Oh, bad trip. <laughs> <laughs> okay, BT ho gaya. Okay, got that. BT ho gaya. Ha, yeah. The third one again. I think you might know this one. Farra. Oh, Farra sounds like um, um, look hard, take for a ride, that kind of a zone. No. 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 Uh, is. Uh, no, it's definitely not boasting. Is it pulling a fast one? I'll give you a hint. Okay. Uh, I totally messed up my NSM for MA one of I. I hope I don't get a farra. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Oh, it's a FR. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know an FR was called a farra. Okay. <laughs> I hope there are very few faculty who give you a FR. <laughs> okay. Uh, the fourth one. Machax. Oh, I, I don't know whether that comes from the slang macha. Is that where it comes from? So from it's a Hindi slang. Machax, no. Machan that I know is a more South Indian slang than a mm. Hindi slang. Is it like dude? Is it like dude no. or no? no? Buddy or dude or no. whatever? No. What else is Hindi? Machax. Achha, machade. Is that where it comes yes. from? It comes <laughs> from that? Oh, no, nice, nice. So, okay, then I can so se- use it in a sentence. So, if one of your friend gets a very good internship in, say, a big day, yeah, much acts, so yeah. So, it's, a, it's very common to post your friend's pictures on Instagram <laughs> with, like, internship company, much acts. <laughs> much acts, okay. I'll tell you the one that I learned. I don't know if you have it, but go ahead. Do you have another or no? So, I was teaching in class, and I teach this thing called uh, Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs. And it starts with basic needs and psychological needs and so on. So I reached a word called self-esteem. And I could see my students, their first year students I teach. And then one uh, student said, oh, you mean flex? And I'm like, OK, whatever. And he didn't say flex. He said flex. <laughs> uh, so I was like, oh, she sa- you're saying that I am getting flex out of it. I'm like, whatever you're getting out of it, your face is telling me you've understood. <laughs> But I love flex, so I use the <laughs> word flex quite often now. <laughs> uh, okay, so moving on from our little quiz, let's go to some more serious questions. So, if you were to relive your student life now, what is it that you would do differently? And what advice would you give your past self or your current students? So, this answer I know because it's genuinely what I have uh, it's not a regret but I, I wish I had done this kind of thing so I said life maximization was I goal. I wanted to do this and I wanted to do that and so on I did uh, I was a civil engineering student um, happy classes uh, easy classes I don't know how they are today and I graduated without too much effort with a 7.53 and I remember second decimal is important, huh? so 7.53 or whatever, which I thought was decent. Uh, I in Bangalore thought it was decent. My career didn't care about it and, and so on. But what I missed was not the grade. What I missed really was being solid, was being like a expert on one thing. Uh, and I wish I had done that, whatever that one thing was. And when I went to IMB, I did better uh, uh, academically. But I now, I used to have friends at IIT who, you know, if you gave them a problem, they would always start with the Newton's first law of motion. So they never remembered any formulae. They knew how to go to first principles and to derive their way up. I didn't. But today, if you give me a business problem, that's how I address it. So I really think that you don't have to, I I don't know if grades are the indicator. Uh, You should always have decent, whatever is decent, I think. 8 is decent or 7.5 whatever you guys think is decent uh, I- enough to not be a uh, not regret it later is is the only point i want to say and you should be an expert on one thing you should be a specialist on one thing you should have an interest and so it can be one thing that is outside your core or whatever but i think i i really wish i had done that here i had the opportunity to do it here and i didn't do it so that's the advice i give myself Okay, the last question for today, 
how has your perspective about professors changed compared to since when you were a student versus now when you are now that you are a professor i <laughs> first thing i think is um, i used to think profs were old <laughs> <laughs> now i don't think profs are old and i mean this i i see not just in age but in outlook and how they carry themselves and and, and so on i also think maybe because i'm 55 and i don't think i'm old that profs are, are are not old is is one point of view but i think the larger point is uh, 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 there isn't uh, and and uh, psychology calls it a parent child relationship which is a adult child relationship i think today's uh, faculty that uh, many of you have access to are a adult adult relationship so i think uh, and uh, of course with life you realize that everything is a two way street so you reach out and your faculty will um, not just help will be a part of your life in in guiding in mentoring and so on so i think the big difference i see it is that um, faculty and students are an adult adult relationship and not a parent child as i thought they were earlier okay with this we come to the end of our interview i would like to express my sincere thanks for you to uh, you know take out time from your schedule i know you must be very busy right now uh, so thank you anu ma'am and we'll see you in the next episode